Uh, I've been a teacher for 10 years and I also took IELTS, so I know what I'm talking about. Uh, I was trying to help my students and I wanted to understand better the exam and how it goes. So I have band 8.5. It is possible to get one. Uh, so what are we covering today? Today we are talking about recipe for success. We're talking about choosing topic vocabulary, then we'll add some adequate collocations. We'll practice word formations and using synonyms and paraphrasing. Exciting, right? Also, uh, we have some gifts from IDP. Oh, what is it? Yeah, yes. Uh, for the best question that uh, is asked during today's workshop. And also at the end, I will ask one tough question. So the first person to answer correctly will get a small gift from IDP. Okay, let's start. Ingredient number one, choosing topic vocabulary. Uh, let's look, I'm sure all of you have been studying for IELTS for some time. So let's look first at the band descriptors. Lexical resource. If we want to get band five, we need to have limited range of vocabulary. So we need to know at least some words. If we want the band six, we need adequate range and we need to attempt some less common vocabulary. Band seven, mm, sufficient. You use less common vocabulary and you are aware of collocations. I assume most of you need six, uh, 6.5 to get into university or to get some kind of scholarship. So you need to hit at least 50-50 from band six and band seven. Uh, band eight, a wide range and a skillful user. And band nine, you are natural and sophisticated. So uh, let's look at two examples. Uh, can you quickly look at these two questions and tell me what are the topics? And please type the answers in the chat box. Mm -hmm. What's the topic? What's the topic? Topics, sorry. What are the topics? What are the topics? Yeah, good. One done. What's the second topic? No guesses? <clears throat> Come on, the second topic is like the easiest ever. Okay, so the first one is, Linda is absolutely right, it's museums. But what is the second topic? The benefits of museums, okay, good. Okay, education, okay. We'll take a bit more general, so schools. So museum and school. Now I have a very tricky question to you. Are the topics museums, are these two topics same? Mm? What do you think? Are they the same? What do you think? Okay, yeah, right you are. They are very similar. Uh-huh, but they're different. Hmm. So you both are right. So they are similar because they talk about learning. They talk about learning and exploration and thinking about some excitement of achieving, uh, of acquiring some knowledge, but they're also very different. Both of them have very specific topic vocabulary. When we talk about museums, we talk about exhibitions, collections, uh, exhibits. When we talk about schools, we usually talk about like 
high school, students, education, classmates. Um, so they have the vocabulary that can be used for both topics, but they also have their own topic vocabulary. So let's look at two sentences. Uh, I will show you two sentences. Can you read them quickly? <clears throat> and tell me which one is a better one. Let's vote. Number one or number two? Number one or number two? Uh -huh. Easier to understand, is this the best thing that we want in an IELTS writing? Mm -hmm. Okay, it seems that the vote is coming. Oh, good. Yeah. Uh, you are absolutely right. Sentence number one is better. But can you tell me why it's better? Any ideas? What is so special about sentence number one? What is that? What is that? What does it have? It has something very interesting. Yeah, exactly. Not just uncommon and academic vocabulary and not just better. It has exactly topic vocabulary. If, let's look for a second. If in the second sentence, I type in school, School, most people would agree, are great places of education thanks to the knowledge of their staff. They well cared for things and their rooms full of interesting items and pictures. You see, the sentence works both for schools and museums. So probably this is not the best way of us showing our language ability, our lexical resource. Exactly. And uh, sentence number one has words like curators, preserved artifacts, time eras, enlightening exhibitions and galleries. This is what we're talking about when we say topic vocabulary. There is really good topic vocabulary here, which is about museums. So why is it important? Why, why do we need it? Because if you look at this band description, you will see a phrase, an adequate range of vocabulary for the task. So if you get a question about museum, you are expected to use the vocabulary for the task about museums. And this is to get band six in lexical resource. So even from like, just to hit band six, you need topic vocabulary. So tip number one for today is you need to demonstrate to the examiner your knowledge of these sets of vocabulary. So this topic vocabulary, if it's about museum, you use a museum. If it's about cities and towns, you use vocabulary connected with urbanization and things like traffic lights. Try to limit your use of general language words that could be used for more than one topic. It doesn't mean that you have to use only topic vocabulary. We'll get to this in about a few minutes. But you need to show the examiner that you know the specific words. That's why there are a lot of these books which are like English vocabulary news, where like every page is devoted to one topic. They're very helpful. So what can you do? How can you learn this topic vocabulary? How can you remember it? 
My tip number two is to make vocabulary verbs, tab tables, lists with word forms and collocations. Let's look at the examples. So on the left, we have like a list. You have a word, you have different wor uh, word forms. You have examples with this word, which is also very helpful when you're learning and you're trying to understand how to use things. You can do tables. If you think like you don't need examples, you can just do a table, but also trying to put many word forms there. Or if you're feeling fun, you can use a map. You can make like a whole web about the vocabulary. And this can also be very helpful if you're doing brainstorming for ideas for uh, the writing task, because sometimes some of these writing tasks can be very tricky and you can't really come up with ideas. So maybe when you're learning the vocabulary, you can also think about like the advantages and disadvantages about the problems connected to the topic in the modern world and solutions. Cool, but there is a big but. Uh, if you were here for the first seminar, we watched a short video and we have a short video today as well. I hope it works well. Uh, we are going to watch a very short, what is it? Yay! Can I show it? Can I show it? No. Okay, give me just one tiny second. Joey, yes! Do you know what I'm about to show you? Do, do you know what I'm talking about with Joey here? Uh, give me one second. I, I, I didn't predict this small miss technical difficulty of uh, the video not playing. Do you know what video I want to show you? No, nobody knows the video? Okay. Resume share. Yay, here's the video. Okay, let's listen to Joey. He has some interesting ideas about topic vocabulary. Sorry, you can't hear them. Oh, mum, 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 mum. Mute. Does everyone hear the video? Oh, record, hide. No, okay, I'm very sorry about that. Give me a second. Mute, uh -huh. Chum, chum, chum. Oof. Mm -hmm. Cannot hear it. Sorry, my bad. Pum, 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 pum. Microphone. Switch to phone audio. Camera. Oh, not very well prepared. Hi, hi. 
Um, um, I want to show a video and it, they can't hear it. Okay, sorry. Oh, no video today. Um, okay, I'll explain what's happening. Uh, maybe if you watch friends, you know. So Joey wants to write a letter to help his friends to get a baby. And Joey doesn't know any big words. So Ross suggests that he uses a thesaurus. Do you know what is a thesaurus? It's a brilliant thing you have to use. Um, and Joey uses a thesaurus, but unfortunately, uh, he ends up with a sentence like this. Let me show you. This is the sentence that Joey writes in a letter. Can anybody decipher this? And do you understand what Joey is talking about? What was the sentence that he tried to, that he tried to write for his friends? They are humid, prepossessing homo sapiens with full-sized erotic pumps. Do you know what Joey was trying to say? What was it? What was it? <laughs> no clue. Yeah, it's a tough one. So Joey, what Joey did, he used, yeah, Linda, you're absolutely right. Homo sapiens, that's people. Yeah. So they are humid people. Hmm. I wonder what is humid. <laughs> um, what Joey did, he used the thesaurus on every single word to sound smart. But do you think it worked? Does he sound smart with this sentence? I don't think so. And it's very difficult to understand what he was trying to say. He was trying to say they are warm human beings with kind hearts. Can you imagine that? They are warm human, they're warm people with kind hearts. That's a cool sentence. So when you are getting ready for your IELTS test, please don't be Joey. Try not to use a thesaurus or an academic word for every word. <laughs> okay, so don't get carried away. My tip number three, you have to sound natural. Joey's sentence is not natural at all. If you're not sure, don't risk it. So if you're not sure about how to use the word for this, 
you should use together a thesaurus and a dictionary. They come hand in hand like best buddies. So if you're not sure about how to use the word, better use a general word for it. But if you're absolutely sure about your academic vocabulary, go on, use it. Yes. So let's look at another example. Let's see if you got the point. Which sentence is better now? Here are two sentences. Think about the previous tip. Which sentence is better this time? Mm hmm the vote is coming. Good. Yeah. More critical. Mm -hmm. Interesting. You're absolutely right. Good job. You got the point. Number two is much better. Number one sounds way too much. You're using it uses way too many words. Academic topic, let's call it that way. Number two is a clear. Yes, it's shorter, but it still uses the proper vocabulary. But at the same time, it's understandable. It's not difficult to read. So tip number four, find balance. You need to have both the general vocabulary and the academic vocabulary. Use a few academic words, use a few topic words, and then the rest can be very general. OK. Let's move to ingredient two of our magic potion. And we are moving to adequate collocations. So, first of all, heads up, uh, a collocation is a set of two or more words which are commonly used together. So here comes the big question, which words collocate? How do I know? Let's see if you can answer that question. So here is a gap. And here are three options. Is it A, B, or C? Which one goes? Excellent. So, yay, good job. Everybody knows that it's higher education. Well done. Yes. So these words are often seen together and they express a particular meaning. So we know that it's high education that we talk about. Let's compare. Let's see if you can recognize things here. This is sentence A. Education helps us to achieve knowledge and new skills. Here is sentence B. Education helps us to get knowledge and new skills. Sentence C, education helps us to acquire knowledge and learn new skills. Yeah, oh, that was fast. I have a question. What's wrong with sentence A? What is? Mm -hmm, exactly. Can we achieve knowledge? <clears throat> Is it possible to achieve knowledge? Yes, no. Yes, no. Mm -hmm. It does sound weird. You're absolutely right. So this is a wrong collocation. We can't say achieve knowledge. Get knowledge and new skills, we can say, but it is general. The proper collocation is to acquire knowledge and to learn new skills. Very good. 
<clears throat> so education helps us to acquire knowledge. Collocations make language fluent, precise. Precise, it means when we can understand everything very quickly. Expressive and natural. So get yourself some good collocations. They are important. Without collocations, it's a bit boring. Let's compare. What else collocations do? So, they don't only help us be natural. Here is sentence A. Farmers have cleared hectares of thick wood plants in tropical Hmm, let me ask you. What is thick wooden land in tropical regions where the precipitation is very high? What is that? Any ideas? Yeah, uh -huh. close, close. Not tropical forest, but some other forest. Do you know any other forests? Hmm? With precipitation. Yay! Exactly. It is farmers have cleared hectares of rainforest. So this example shows us we might not know, like sentence A is not wrong. It's not wrong. It's just very long. And remember, in IELTS exam, you don't have that many words. You have only 250 words minimum. So, collocation, oh, let's try one more. What does it mean to lead separate lives? Let's try one more. It's a good example. Uh, not that extreme. It's not yet divorce. They're still married. No, lead, lead is good. Lead. Uh, we're not talking about the result here. Which means lead here means to leave. So like to have. So like you can say that they have separate lives. Okay. Maybe they're living apart, but not necessarily. Okay. It means that they, what is it? Yeah. Although they're married and they live together, they rarely speak to each other. So like one person is doing one thing, another person is doing another thing. So they have separate lives, but they're still together. So <clears throat> to lead separate lives, this is a collocation, which helps us in this case, so separate lives, it allows us to express lengthy ideas with just a few words, which will save us time. And at IELTS exam, time is, oh my God, 40 minutes only. So a collocation is very helpful. But there is one more thing why it is important. It's important to use collocations because look here at the band descriptor. Uh, point two, with some awareness of style and collocation. So if you want to get band seven or even band 6.5, you need to be aware of collocations. Aware it means that you are trying to use them. They might not be correct always, like achieve knowledge. So that you know that there, there is a verb coming with knowledge, but you might not using it correctly, for example, but you still have to try to, you should try to use them as, more as, as, as much as you can. Uh, so, oh, what did I want to do? Um, let's look at two more sentences. We're looking at a lot of sentences today. Ooh, these ones are long. Um, we're talking about transport. Which sentence do you like mo mo more? I'll give you a minute to read it, like quite heavy. Which sentence do you like more? Number one or number two? Okay. 
Mm-hmm. Votes are coming in. Votes are coming in. Uh-huh. Oh. Okay. Ooh, we have some division here. We'll look at both. We'll look at both. Um, but let's first start with the better sentence. And the better sentence is sentence number two. Because look at this wonderful collocations. Pressing problems, public transport, extortionate ticket prices, required to pay, lack of competition, public transport industry. Mm. Somebody's catching up. Um, yes, have a monopoly over transport options. Okay, let's look at sentence number one, just to be clear so that you see what is good about it. The good part about it is it uses less common vocabulary. There is absence, solitary, and fees. It also uses topic vocabulary. Transport, public places, tickets, bus and train fees. So we hit two, two. But how about the collocations? Let's look at the collocations. Unfortunately, we don't say heavy problems. We don't say expensive prices of tickets. The prices cannot be expensive. The tickets can be expensive, prices can't. We don't say the absence of competition or solitary companies. So unfortunately, in this case, we are losing on collocations. And even if you did correctly with the topic vocabulary, if you did correctly with the less common vocabulary and your collocations are wrong, Sorry, but you are losing your points in lexical resource. So all the good you did, you just crossed out with wrong collocations. So be very careful. What can you do? What can you do is you can read books. <laughs> if you were here uh, for the first time, now I was, I am a bookworm, but. Reading books is really helpful. Uh, they help you to see the collocations in natural context. You can see how things come together and you can and you can just improve your vocabulary so, 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 so much. I can't even stress. Point two, okay, maybe you are not a huge fan of books. That's fine, we got you covered. Try to watch TV series set in school or university. Because this can also help you not with your collocations, but also adds to your listening. If, if you remember correctly, in listening you have four parts and two of them are set in social context and two of them are of academic nature, but all of them are somehow related to like school, university, work situations. So it's something that you definitely will see in a TV show. And also, TVs and books provide emotions, and emotions are very important when you're learning vocabulary. If you read something funny or something extremely sad or something that makes you think like, what is happening here? You will remember the vocabulary. My students yesterday mentioned a really cool example of uh, the despicable me. Uh, about the unicorn, uh, about the girl getting a big toy unicorn and she's like shaking and she's like, it's so fluffy. 
honestly, after this, everybody knew the word fluffy. So the more emotions, the better. To combine both, you can listen to audiobooks. So audiobooks will help you both with your listening and your collocations and your grammar. And books are generally a bit more academic than TV shows. It depends on the TV show, of course, but books usually tend to use more complex vocabulary. Uh, if you don't feel up like, like reading a whole book, you can always try to read children books, comic books, or try books for teenagers. They are amazing. Everything that's like written for the age 12 to 17, so much fun. The stories are great. The um, plot is amazing. The vocabulary is very good. If you want to build up your confidence in listening and reading, this is a great source. Because let's be honest, IELTS reading can be very demotivating if you like straight away jump into IELTS. One more point, have conversations and practice. So you get all the vocabulary, you write it all down, you make it into a map, you make it into a table, but you need to practice it. So you can have a conversation, you can always find a study buddy, you can go to class, you can find language exchange exchange programs or practice can be writing a post on Facebook, writing an Instagram post. It's still practicing the more you try to use. Turn all of your devices to English and try to just like, even if you are writing like on pen and paper, that's another thing. If you're going to take IELTS on paper, try to write more. So like get yourself a diary or a notebook. If you're taking IELTS computer-based, try to type more. So maybe a Facebook post, an Instagram post, or Zalo, whatever fits, or like whatever is your cup of tea. Like you can use it for writing. Uh, if you're sending questions to the Q&A box, we'll look at it at the end, okay? Don't worry, I'll answer all the questions. Uh, one thing which I am deeply against is, what is it, I'm to, listening to music. This is a big no, 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 no. Um, music is not good source of vocabulary because music usually uses a lot of vocabulary which is uh, informal and slang. Music is not very good for grammar, uh, it's, not very good for pronunciation because very often people shift pronunciation to fit the rhythm of a song. And uh, let's be honest, modern music has a lot of repetitive lines. So it's definitely not adding to your vocabulary. So please don't do that. No. YouTube, better. Like TED Talks, conferences, webinars. Music is not a very nice option. Okay, so we got two ingredients. We need third ingredient. Our third ingredient is practice word formation. So here I will need you to be ready to type a bit more. So what are word forms? Hmm, success, <gasps> successful. Comes up by good. Successfully and succeed. These are very important things for us. So, how can I succeed in IELTS? Let's look at some of the details connected with word forms. Okay, are you ready to type? Are your fingers ready? So, we can use some prefixes. For example, prefix re. What does it mean? Hmm? What's the meaning of re? Redo, refresh, return, repair, redecorate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. Again, or to go back. Okay, return. Uh, sub. S U B. Yay. What is S U B? Sub. Subdivide, subheading, submarine. 
when you're doing a breeding test, it's important to read your subheadings. Oh, nice. Mm, both. Exactly. Under or less important. Submarine is underwater. Subheading is under the heading. Subdivide becomes less important. Good. Let's try one more. Super. Supermarket. Superman. Superstar. What is super? Mm -hmm. <laughs> big, 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 big. Yes, you're right. It's great. Ooh, good one. High quality. Yeah, in a positive way. So it's greater. Supermarkets, it's like a greater market. Superman, it's a greater man. Powerful, ooh, superstar. Good. Uh, one last one. That's a tricky one. Auto. Autobiography, autograph. What is auto? Hmm? Nice. Machine. Autobiography. What is Is it a book about machines? Hmm? But you're thinking in the right direction? Yes. It's all about self. Yes. Self or own. Autobiography, autograph. So something that you're doing on your own. Okay. I've been talking for a very long time. Time for you to do some work. Uh, I will show you a list of verbs and a set of, pre uh, set of prefixes. How many words can you make? Ta -da -da. One minute. Can you type as many words as you can? You don't have to make one. You can make one long message. Or make him small messages. Doesn't matter. Good. Good, 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 good. Nice. Ooh, there is no such word as overplace. Sorry. You can misplace something or replace. Displace also is possible. Can't overplace. Nice, okay. Overacting, mistake. Ooh, no such thing as misact, sorry. Nope. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me show you the answers. Uh, you can screenshot the answer. Mm -hmm. Hope you all managed to screenshot it. So prefixes is one. Let's look at how it looks in the else exam. So we're writing a sentence and let's compare two sentences. One, 
and two. Oh, A and B this time. <gasps> Which one is better? Mm -hmm. Oh, did you know? Oh my God, such fast answers. Yes, you're absolutely right. So misplaced, already we're getting an extra point in our less common vocabulary because lose, it's quite a general word. So. If we use misplace, we get an extra point. Uh, yeah, okay. Next point, so we did look at the prefixes. Now let's look at the end of the word, where comes suffixes. Suffixes help us to make from one part of speech, another part of speech. If we want to make a verb into an adjective, able, read, readable, enjoy, enjoyable. We can make adjectives into noun, kind, kindness, sad, sadness. Uh, we can use adjectives into verbs, vocalize, forgotten. And we can make verbs into nouns, explore, exploration, write, writing. Okay, let's, let's do some work. Uh, I have a dragon and my dragon has three bags. Each bag needs some diamonds in it. So here uh, is my dragon. He is a very kind and happy dragon. And there are some verbs here. Can you try and divide the verbs into I-F-Y, I-S-E, and A-T-E? Hmm? So like, Tara, Tara. What's the verb there? Mm? Mm -hmm. So can you try and divide, divide as many verbs as you can? Mm, nice. Activate, activate, fertilize. Nice. Okay, good, 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 good. Oh, you can say terrorize. You can. That's what all the terrorists do. Advertise, fertilize, purify. Nice. Um, I'll uh, give a hint, every bag should have four diamonds. So four verbs. <laughs> okay, it seems like everybody is ignoring the ATE bag. I just saw the activate. What else goes into ATE? Mm -mm. Meditate is a bit different. Meditate comes from the word meditation. This is the word medicine. But you're thinking of the right bag, just the wrong verb. Signify, activate, good. Mm, close. <laughs> Medicinate. Something there, pollinate, almost, but the spelling is not very good. It's with I, not with E. Pollinate is with I. Ooh, relate comes from a different word. Pollen, okay, one second, relate. 
comes from the, rela the word relation, rel relatives, not from reality. Pollen, when you have a flower and there are like small yellow thingies on the flower, this is called pollen, and the bees come and they eat the flower and they get the pollen and then they fly to the next flower and then leave the pollen there so we can have more flowers. Yes, purify. Cool. Most of the answers are good, 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 good. Let me show you the correct one. So we have terrify, intensify, signify, purify. No, it's not pollinize. Advertise, fertilize, stabilize, realize, and differentiate, pollinate, medicate, and activate. Um, Don't forget to screenshot the correct answers so you can keep them. Okay. So I hope you had enough time to screenshot it. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa to what? <laughs> Which verb surprised you? The dragon is very happy he got all the diamonds, or she. Who? Medicaid, yes. So when you take a lot of medicine, yes, it, it says Medicaid. Okay, uh, let's see how it looks in IELTS writing. So for example, we are talking about the advantages of exercising and we have A, and we have B. Guess which one is better? Mm Yep. Yep, 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 yep. For sure. So word forms, again, give us variety. They help us to use different, so like you can use in one sentence the word stronger, and then if you use in the, in the second sentence or in the other sentence the word strengthen, you're showing that you know word forms and you're trying to show your lexical variety. But it's not the only way. So we have prefixes, we have suffixes, and we can do something else. We can do, what else can we do? We can do, what are they? Oh, <laughs> I think I have a bit of a spelling mistake. I hope you can forgive me. It's not me, Beckman, his fault. So compounds. Do you know what is a compound? Anybody? Can you help me? What is a compound? No, you. No idea. Thank you for your honest answer. Anybody can help us? Ooh. Yay, very good. In chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm personally not very good in chemistry, but definitely in chemistry we have compounds. Uh, yes, you're absolutely right. A compound is linking of two or more base words to create a new word. It's a combination of substances. Yes, basically we're combining two substances or more. We're combining new words. It's not as 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 um, intensive as in German language, if you're learning German, uh, you're my hero. Uh, for example, let's look at. Uh, for example, heartbreaking. We are combining a noun heart and a verb break, and we get heartbreaking. Very often, the first word is a key feature of the second word, so break 
what kind of breaking, heartbreaking. So break is kind of the key here, um, the main word here, and heart is a key feature or like a key point of it, heartbreaking. Uh, compounds can come in all shapes and forms and in all parts of speeches. So we can have, let's look what we can have. We can have nouns, air conditioning, blackboard. We can have uh, adjectives, spine chilling, seasick. We can have verbs. Color code, where are my verbs? Verbs, color code, proofread. We can also have some adverbs, nevertheless, thereby. So there, are, there is a huge variety uh, of compounds. And again, they help us with our lexical resource. Uh, let's try. I will show you two boxes. Can you? Let's do first roads. Let's see how the roads go. So, ah, uh, no, mm, okay. So here are two things. Uh, if we put together the words from both boxes, we can get things to wear, people, roads, and money. Let's see how many words can you get. I'll give you one minute. Let's do one minute. The easiest one is probably the the first one. Baby, ooh, nice. Yeah. Sunglasses is one word. You you write it together. Earrings, good. Baby glasses? What are baby glasses? I have never seen it. Oh, poor babies. Mm. Boyfriend, good. Ooh, pedestrian crossing. Five points for that. Glasses for babies. <laughs> Good, car parking, car parking, good, traffic lights, good, baby guard, oh my god, baby guard, it's like a, a, a dog, a dog that guards babies, pitbull, I remember historically pitbulls were the ones that were guarding babies, yay, parking meter, good, swimming guard, no, oh, the swimming guard, that's the job, that job is called lifeguard. Car park, good. Checkbook, yes. Income tax, good. Raincoat, good. Raincoat is one word. Uh, checkbook, Grand Park. What? Traffic lights, pedestrian crossing, good. Swimming costume, yes. Babysitter is one word. You write them together. Sunlight. That sounds interesting. Bodyguard. Good. Bodyguard is also one word. Good. Good, 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 good. I think we've mentioned everything. Let's see. Yay. Raincoat. Yes, raincoat, one word. You write together. So... Please finish up the answers for the future. So probably again, like when you're writing your tables with the vocabulary, try again to put some words that are compound nouns or oh, compound verbs, nouns, adjectives, anything. Uh, let's look at the how it works in IELTS. I hope you had time to screenshot. Uh, how it will look in IELTS. Here is sentence A and here is sentence, I oh, know. Uh, 
Raincoat, yeah. We live in Vietnam. Do you have a raincoat? I do. A proper one, like very heavy duty one, even if the rainy season is over. Uh, look at my sentence A. Can you use a compound noun here to paraphrase it? <laughs> One person answered and was like, oh, yeah, I agree. Yeah, no typing. Yes. So nowadays, majority of people work at home, which leads to headaches. You're absolutely right. It's k -k -k headache, by the way. Just you agree. Good. Yes. So again, if we remember the things about collocations, so the same with the compounds, they help us to make the sentence shorter, to make it more precise, more natural. Nobody says like, oh my God, I'm having pain in my head. Nobody says that. I have a headache, or if it's really bad, you're having a migraine. But nobody says like, oh my God, I have a pain in my head. Nope. Good. Um, why is it important? Here we're looking at all three bands. So if you look at band number five, it says make, may make noticeable arrows in word formations. Six, makes some arrows in word formations. Seven, may produce occasional arrows in word formations. So from band five, you are expected to use different word forms. They are very helpful and we'll see in the next, uh, in our ingredient number four, how they help us with paraphrasing. But they're an absolute necessity. So our tip number six is very basic. Use your prefixes, use your suffixes and use your compounds. Very easy. Um, and learn how to use them. Uh, and let's get to the ingredient four of our magic potion. Yes, we're making a magic potion here, which is called success in the aisles. It's very important. It has some sparkles. So ingredient four, how to use synonyms and paraphrase. So let's look again at our band descriptors. Band seven and band eight, you have sufficient range of vocabulary a wide range of vocabulary. You might think, oh, but I don't need band eight. That's not my goal. But please remember that all across your writing speaking, you have four criteria. And your final mark is based on the combination of these criteria. So if you hit, for example, band six in your grammar, but you get an eight in your lexical resource, you get a seven, or like 6.5, because you also have other uh, criteria to count in. So you should still try to, to hit as many points as you can, even if you think that your goal is like below that. So let's look at some paraphrasing. The first way of how we can paraphrase, we can use synonyms. What are synonyms? What are synonyms? Well, what are they? What do we call a synonym? Hmm? Is it... Ooh, okay. Chen is getting there. Is it same meaning, like 100% same meaning? Can like the words be like 100%? Mm hmm Yeah, good job. Exactly. It's the words that are very similar to other words. That's why we have this magic books called dictionaries because they, so 
if you open thesaurus online or in the book, it will give you a list of words. And usually the closest, the first word will be the closest synonym. But the words in English, and I think in any other language, even if they have similar meaning, it doesn't mean that we can interchange them in a sentence. So we'll need to make some changes. So for example, if we go to the thesaurus uh, and we type in the word, I type the most popular word in writing part one, uh, it's the word amount. We'll get a list, a substantial amount of money, the same amount of people as last year. Quantity, number, total, aggregate, sum, quota, group, size, mass, weight. But we can't say like, for example, group of money. You can't. So amount and group are similar in meaning, but we cannot use group with money. Uh, we can say like volume of work. Can we say volume of people? So this is when we need a combination. We need to look at the thesaurus, and then we need to look at the dictionary and see in which context we can use words. Can we change them? Can we use them? Can we interchange them, sorry? Can we uh, use them in the context that we have? So be very careful. Let's compare. So um, okay, here uh, here are my two sentences uh, from the body paragraph. Uh, the words underlined. Can you give me synonyms for them? So like what words can you use instead of believe, visitors, follow, customs, disagree, welcome, differences? Let's take a minute, maybe two. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Believe, think. Can we say that, like, try using the word foreigners here. Some people believe that foreigners to other countries, can we use it like that? Tourists, that sounds good. Somebody is reading my mind. Argue, that's a really good word. Mm -hmm. What else do we have? I forgot to say, no cheating. Don't look in the dictionary. Try to use your memory. Partial concepts. Concepts is a good word, but it doesn't have the meaning of being different. So you'll need then to still add like different con cultural concepts. And con like cultural concepts are a very broad, um, a broad word. Oh, welcome, accept, good. Disparity. No, not sure about cu cultural disparity. Oh, maybe cultural disparities. I would use cultural disparities because disparity you can count. Like some huge differences. Pursue customs, norms. Ooh, nice. Follow, pursue. Ah, so you see follow and pursue. Pursue means to go after somebody. So like or like to pursue your goal. It means you're going, you're moving. Uh, oh, distinction. Uh, but here follow means not go after, but kind of do what is told. So it's a bit different meaning. Oh, Galaxy A7 2018. Great name, by the way. Your parents had great imagination. Um, abide by, that's a really cool adapt to. 
maybe adapt to low. Then that's a possibility. We can say adapt. Okay, let's see what I have. All the options are great. Thank you very much for so such active participation. Uh, let's see what I have. Think or believe, tourists or visitors, abide by or follow rules, customs. I have dispute, dispute, disagree, embrace. It's a very good word when we talk about like differences. Uh, let's embrace our differences. Uh, welcome diversity, another great word. Uh, good. Uh, be careful with the, so like diversity, it's um, abstract noun, so it's always singular. Difference, uh, you can count, so it's a countable noun. You used to have differences. And some other words that people wrote, like distinction, distinctions, uh, it's a countable noun. Disparity, it's a countable noun. So when you're looking at the dictionary, uh, please look uh, multicultural. Others dispute and think that the host country should embrace multicultural. Multicultural is a bit different. So like multicultural, like Ho Chi Minh City, I would say is a multi multicultural city because we have people from different cultures living in one place. Here we're talking about like how different things are when we travel. So it's a bit, it's a different meaning. Multi means many. So like we're not talking about many things present here. So it's a bit different in meaning. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, okay. Uh, but, but when paraphrasing, we always remember Joey. Joey, I <laughs> keep Joey in your mind when paraphrasing. Will Joey say, would Joey say this? Yeah. <laughs> he's a he's a really great example. It's like the best. Okay, uh, let's try next. Um, I see uh, whoever sent the question into Q and A box. I see it. I'll just cover it at the end. No worries. Uh, let's think next. So we use the synonyms, but that's not the only way we can change a sentence. So let's try to change word order. Uh, we usually change word order when we change the grammar. Uh, so this is the sentence. Uh, can you try and change the word order here? Okay. And then I'll show you my variant. How would you paraphrase this sentence? How would you change the word order? The key is to change grammar a little bit. Mm -hmm. Nice. Oh my God, Chen, you're reading my mind. Any other options?
Oh, nice one. When visiting other countries. Good. Following local customs is important. Yes, it is. Good. Excellent. Paraphrasing. All three. Um, good one, but we, um, we, oh, it, 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 it's not very natural to say by other countries visitors. So like by visitors from other countries. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, if you're typing, keep typing. I'll just show the uh, option that I have. Um, what is my option? Yay. So some people think, so again, I'm still using synonyms, that local customs and characteristics, more paraphrasing, more synonyms, should be followed by tourists when they go to other countries. So a little bit change in the word order. And I'm scoring a grammar point for using passive. I'm scoring my... Um, Lexical points, we're using synonyms, and also I'm using, yeah, I'm also trying to paraphrase. I'm doing good. Uh, what's next? Ooh, next is a fun one. Uh, word formations. Oh, we just talked about them, mm, didn't we? Uh, let's try the other sentence. So others disagree and think that the host country should welcome cultural differences. Can you paraphrase it changing a word form? Ooh, interesting. If you use disagreements, you'll have to change the structure a lot. So like you'll say like there are disagreements on, and then you have to say like on what? On disagreements on whether the host country should welcome cultural differences. Something like that. But good try. Other ideas? Come on, don't be shy. Try to experiment. Difficult. Oh. Okay, if it's difficult, let me give you a hint. Can you paraphrase the word cultural differences? How would you change a form? Uh-huh. Please remember culture is a countable noun. So we'll probably need to use uh, notice. Yes. Good. Yeah. Okay, let me show you my option. Yay, nice. Open to culture diversity. Ooh, been kind of cool sentence the differences of cultures. Nice. So I have, again, look, disagree, dispute, think that a variety of cultures, differences, culture, variety, a great synonym of cultures should be welcomed by host countries. Mm -hmm. So we change word forms. That's not everything that we can change. We can do more. We can use antonyms. Do you know what is an antonym? What is an antonym? Hmm. 
Yes, you're right. It's an opposite meaning. Okay. The same sentence again. We're still working with it, trying to make it as diverse as we can. So others disagree and think that the host country should welcome cultural differences. Um, let's try and find an antonym for the word welcome. What is the anthem? This, oh, nice. Unlock. <laughs> Can we say here unwelcome? The host country. No, unwelcome it means to send back somebody. It's a bit different. Disregard. Okay. Should. Should not disregard. Unwelcome is like, get out, get out of my house, get out of my country. Now, remember, welcome is to accept, to embrace something. Farewell is like, bye bye, bye bye, bye bye, bye bye, bye bye. No, we're not finishing the webinar yet, but. So welcome means to accept, to embrace cultural differences. So what can be the opposite meaning of that? Accept and uh, uh, yay. She has excellent today, it's reading my mind. Bad, ooh, that sounds extreme. Okay, okay. Let's see. Others dispute that. This. So disagree, dispute, and think that host country, host nation. Um, well, um, host nation should not reject cultural variety. Um, Please remember that when you're doing writing part two, you have introduction, two bodies, and a conclusion. So we'll, you will repeat similar ideas, so you'll need to be able to paraphrase the same things a few more times, a few times. Should welcome, disagreeable. That's a bit different, that's an adjective. Okay, what else we can do? We can completely change something. We can do like a 180 of a sentence, which will be fun. Here is my sentence. Let's change it a bit because we've already tried everything possible with the other two. So these days, more and more people are going to other countries for significant periods of time, either to find a job or to study. Can you try and paraphrase these days for me? More and more people. Mm -hmm. Job and study also can be paraphrased. Going to can be paraphrased. Ooh, vast majority of people, that sounds nice. Mm -hmm. Try to see any, any part of the sentence that you feel you can paraphrase. Travel abroad, we travel usually for fun, not for job or study. Oh, nice, extended amount of time, good. Vast majority, good. A lot of people, good. 
recently, good. Travel abroad doesn't match the context of job and study. Seek employment, no preposition for seek employment. Ooh, nowadays a decreasing number. Your subject is number, so it's not the raw. And the amount of time to seek job opportunities, seek no for, no preposition, seek something, seek job opportunities, seek treasure, seek love. Foreign countries, good. Study, pursue higher education, good. You're being more specific, but that's good. So, for example, you can say, like, pursue education prospects. Significant experience. Why, why are you using the word experience here? Either career pursuit, significant experience. Then experiences, plural, uh, either career pursuit or studying abroad. Um, oh, that's, um, if you pay attention to this sentence, significant experience, either uh, career pursuit or study abroad. Please be careful when you're using or and and, and and, yes, or and. Uh, you have to use the same parts of speech. So career pursuit is a noun phrase. So after or has to be a noun phrase. So either career pursuit or studying abroad. Be very attentive. This is a big grammar point. Or and they need the same parts of speech around them. Planning to go to foreign countries. Good. Countries and nations. Good. Yeah, and and or are very tricky and people very often miss them. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see what I've done. You've, you've given me some really cool options here. Uh, where's my option? To get a good job, yes. We always need to get a good job. So I have, in recent years, the number of people choosing to move abroad, either for work or education, has increased substantially. Let's see what I've done. So first of all, more and more people becomes the number of people. There were some other good advices in the chat. A vast majority of people. Mm, there was something else really nice. Uh, also, we can do so these days. Uh, oh, no, I missed something else here. Mm. Uh, so, more and more people is paraphrased as the number of people has increased substantially. So, you see, we're using, we break a phrase more and more people into a noun phrase and a verb has increased significantly. I'm sure you know this word, the this verb and this structure from writing part one. So you can recycle it. Uh, these days, so in the original sentence, we had these days are going. And then if we paraphrase it to in recent years, we can also use present perfect has increased. So we are getting points, not just for different structure, but also a grammar point for using present perfect. Isn't that good? Uh, bum, 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 bum. I think I have. Yeah, recent years, yes, it has increased. So tip number seven, use your synonyms. Try to change word order, use different word forms, uh, try to use some antonyms, and try to change the sentence completely. Um, bum, bum, bum. And also following that goes tip number eight, which is 
let me do a bit warm up for that. So when you're writing at the test, you have just 40 minutes to get it done. That's not that much. So when you're writing and you think, okay, how can I say it differently? Try not to waste your time because time is precious. So if you feel like, okay, I think I can paraphrase it. Think of a way to paraphrase like within 10 or 20 seconds. If you didn't come up with an answer, underline that expression and then come back to it later, like at the end of like when you have like your five minutes to check things, you read your writing part one, you see how you have done there, you're reading your writing part two, and you're like, oh, okay, can I paraphrase it? Yes, no, because the examiners will not mind if things are underlined, like it's, it's fine for them, they don't care. You can do other marks on your paper to show like, oh, okay, I need to think of how I can paraphrase it. So just come back to it later at the end of your test and see if you can paraphrase it. Uh, it's much more important to finish the essay, way more important to finish it, because if you don't finish it, you are not getting your points for task achievement. So like it means you haven't completed your task, especially if there is no conclusion. Um, that's a big no-no. So like you'll lose your points uh, in the first criteria. And unfortunately, <clears throat> the first criteria is kind of one of the most important ones. So if you don't have the whole essay structure, like introduction, body, and conclusion, you might not get higher than band like five maybe maybe six if you did very well in like your body but then your lexical resource will not matter that much because you haven't completed the task you haven't answered the questions fully so as much as lexical resource is important and it gets you the points it's still the number one question is to finish your essay and i also have coming from this tip number nine so how can you Again, improve your lexical resource. How can you get the most of your lexical resource? Read. Read, 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 read. Uh, as much as you can, as many things as you can. Uh, we have some time left, so maybe if uh, everybody wants to know, I have a few slides on like what you can read. So if it's something that you want to see, type in the box, type in the chat. Um, I can go through the things you can read. And when you're reading, try to be selective. Choose, decide, pick. Like even when you're reading for uh, your reading IELTS test, you can always look at the text and at the questions. Like when you're studying, look at the test, look at the questions, and try to see how things are paraphrased. Yeah, how things are paraphrased. Underline these things like. What does it say in the text? What does it say in the question? You can do the same with listening. So like when you're doing listening, do the same thing. Try to underline things. So like after you finish the task, go back to the uh, listening script and see uh, what's done there. Like how things are said compared to the question. You can take these phrases and these chunks of vocabulary for your writing and for your speaking, which is extremely important. Um, okay, what do you think of the steps? Do they help? Do you have like a better understanding of your lexical resource? Yes, no, I don't know. Quietness. Okay. Okay. Good. Pum, 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 pum. Uh, okay, a few answers are coming in. Uh, one more 
tip for studying is always to do reflection. Always, whether you're studying home alone, whether you're in class or after this webinar, the moment we finish, close it and think, what have I learned today? What was new for me? What was easy? What was difficult and why? Um, I forgot to type the point why. It really helps your memory to uh, get the ideas and to remember things that you've studied. Uh, think of what's new, what came in, in, into your life today and what was easy and what was difficult. Difficult is extremely the most important point. So if you did something and you're like, oh my God, this was difficult. Think of why was it difficult? Which part was difficult and how you can change it? How can you break it into smaller steps? And uh, how can you make it easy for you? How can you learn to make it better? Oh, I'm glad you feel less worried. That's, that's amazing. Uh, we have, so we have uh, time for questions, of course. And I have three questions. Let me look at them. Okay, uh, let's go for, I don't know how it will look. Let me experiment. So let's, here is a great question. You would, I, I, so I have three questions in the Q&A box. So let's address them. Uh, one question is, should I read books while listening to audio at the same time? No. So uh, for your brain, the easiest thing for your brain is to read. Listening is much more difficult. So do not try to combine reading and listening together. So listening is more difficult. So for example, you pick the book that you like. First, listen. So like... Uh, I don't know, like five, 10 minutes, but let's make it five. You listen to something for five minutes and then you pause and you think, okay, what did I hear? What did I get? What, I did, what didn't I get? What was it about? Try to make like a short summary, like five, four or five sentences and like write them down. And then go to the paper book or like digital book, whatever you're reading, and see if you understood everything clearly. Read it the same five minutes that you've listened to and see if these things match. Uh, see what things you got right and what things you got wrong. So this goes for the same thing with the movies. A lot of people, the mistake they make when they are learning is to watch something with subtitles. Watching things with subtitles is the worst thing you can do, one of the worst things you can do for your brain. So you think, oh my God, I'm so smart. I can understand everything. When in reality, you are reading, your brain is reading, your brain is not listening. So I know it can be tricky and very overwhelming at first. So try maybe with something easy first. So listen or watch things first. Try to make a summary. Try to answer for yourself questions. What did I understand? What I didn't get? And then go to the tape, trans, uh, tape scripts. Uh, go to the tape scripts. Uh, go to the book. Read it. And
Vielen Dank. Um. Try, try something. Um, what about now? Can you hear me now? Perfect. You who excellent. Okay. Uh, next question, which was really cool. Um, yay. 
and we still have four questions to answer. Four questions. Okay, let's do it. Uh, so the way I organized the webinar and the topic, yes. The, the way I organize this is the way you should be upgrading your language and the way you should be upgrading your IELTS band. So going from band five, you look at the band descriptors, band five, six, seven, and eight, and see like how can you make it better. So like starting from topic vocabulary, you need topic vocabulary just to get band five. Then you need like collocation to get band six. So the way I we added the ingredients today to our magic potion of success is exactly how you should upgrade your IELTS band. So like to get a higher band, you need these four ingredients, but first start with the ingredient number one, then ingredient number two, three, and four. Uh, done. Okay, next question was, how can I paraphrase uh, faster? Practice. Like with English, everything is in practice. Uh, whatever you, whatever you're trying to do, whatever you're trying to learn, it's like muscle exercises. So to practice faster, you need to practice paraphrasing in your daily life. So like, get yourself a grammar book. Um, get yourself books. For example, there is a, a, not an IELTS exam, but there is a test certificate exam which is not very popular, uh, but it has grammar part in it. And the, one of the grammar parts is paraphrasing. So if you get yourself a book to get ready for FCE, let me type in FCE, uh, you will find the exercises and help how you can improve your paraphrasing. I'm not a huge fan of uh, answering the other questions about the websites. I'm not a huge fan of websites because unfortunately the internet is flooded with a lot of, uh, how to say, uh, not reliable resources. I would recommend like apps uh, on your phone. There are much better apps for your vocabulary than there are, um, than there are websites, I think. Uh, so like, and your phone is always with you. So when you have like five minutes, uh, you can uh, always practice. So yes, for paraphrasing, okay, uh, done. That's question answered. Um, websites and to improve paraphrasing. So I would recommend not websites, but apps. Let me see what I've got on my phone. Uh, there are really cool apps. Let me type in the name quickly in the chat. Uh, there is Magush, uh, so which is uh, a selection of uh, vocabulary apps that help you to prepare. They have really cool flashcards. Uh, Quizlet is an app where you can. Quizlet. Uh, I'm sure most of you have um, heard about it. It's a great app where you can make. Uh, and where you can see people making stuff. Uh, Kahoot, I'm sure you played Kahoot sometime. It's a great place to find what people made and what kind of resources they made. There is a, a bit more difficult one with uh, vocabulary, but still a good app called Quisitive. It's also like practicing. Uh, Cambridge, surprisingly, have the English vocabulary in use uh, in an app, English vocabulary. Sorry, I'm typing slowly because in use. There is a great app for it. Uh, I've recently discovered Climb, but it's uh, for like a, a bit higher level, I would say. Also a good app. Um, I think these are the ones that I recommend right now most of all. And like generally just get yourself a good dictionary, um, use a good dictionary. Um, want to read more. So to read more, decide what genre you want, decide what kind of books, suggestions to learn vocabulary effectively. Uh, I've recently discovered a really cool magazine. It's called Vocable. It's a French magazine, which is made for English learners. <laughs> And it has incredible articles, which will help you in speaking part three and writing part two. And 
Vocable also gives like a lot of synonyms for the uh, vocabulary. Um, any book websites to learn vocabulary effectively? Um, I would say like National Geographic, everything that is not very hyped on the news is good for vocabulary improvement. Try not to use things that uh, are too news related like CNN, Fox, because they are there to cause you feel a lot of emotions and the vocabulary is then not very academic. But like National Geographic, history magazines, science magazines, everything that you can find on the web uh, is definitely very effective for, um, yes, definitely very effective for your vocabulary. Uh, about learning the vocabulary, uh, a good question, how to learn new vocabulary in the right way, because it's very difficult to remember words. Uh, interval, I would say like, first of all, do intervals. So repeat the words daily. So the words that you like, it's um, repeat one day, two days. Um, uh, for example, you learn a new word today, repeat it in three days, repeat it in three days, repeat it in a week, in a week. So it's, uh, it goes like one, three, one, three, three, seven, uh, seven, 14, 30, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. No, one, seven, one, 30 and 60. So it goes, you repeat, you learn the word today, you repeat it in three days, you repeat it in three days, uh, you repeat it in seven days, in 14 days, 30 days, and 60 days. Uh, repetition is not just reading the word, but trying to use it. So like, uh, try to use it in a sentence, try to use it in your speaking, in your writing, in any way possible you can use, um, you can use uh, is probably the, um, yeah, any way possible you can do it works. Uh, but the most important is trying to use the vocabulary, trying not to just read it and say like, okay, I know what it means. No, knowing what it means is not good enough. Good enough is to be able to use it in your writing or speaking. I hope that answered the questions. Okay. Um, Okay, I have one last question uh, for us. So I've answered all the questions that were in Q&A. I hope that was a sufficient answer. Uh, I have one question. So because we have two gifts from IDP, one gift goes to the uh, best question, uh, which I'm already have in mind who is getting that. But we have a second gift from IDP as well. And for this, you have to answer my question. So which of the following sentence would be best to write in an essay about tourism and economies? So I'll show you four examples. You need to choose A, B, C, or D. The first person to choose will get a small gift from IDP. Ready, steady, and go. Here are the four sentences. Cool. That was fast. Good. So in and trip 10, I'm not, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing correctly. Uh, I wrote down your names and I will pass your names on to the IDP or you can inbox them as well and you can get your gift. Thank you very much for being so active today. Uh, Yes, B is the best one. Uh, if you need more resources or more help, this is my email. I work at Matisha at ASAT and I uh, regularly now give workshops here. So if you need more help, 
if you have any other questions or you need some recommendations, please feel free to email me. I might not answer immediately because I have classes, uh, but I will um, answer for sure. Uh, thank you very much for finding time on your Sunday morning and coming and listening. And thank you very much for trying to improve your lexical resource. Good job. Uh, I hope you learned um, some good tips today that you can use to upgrade your IELTS band. And I wish you best of luck in taking your IELTS exam. And uh, have a great day. And remember to enjoy uh, learning English. It's not as boring as people think. It is extremely exciting. So thank you very much for participating and have a wonderful Sunday. Bye. Thank you. Uh.